fantastic Birds of Prey panel with a lovely one. this uh, streaming going because they weren't able to make it to Atlanta. Yeah, and but, we're uh, old and trying to figure this out. So, this is so See, I don't Oracle, have Oracle should know how to do all of this. She's all knowing, right? Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> things are coming out today. Yeah. It's the first time. You guys are from Atlanta. Raise your hand. Oh, no way! Thanks for having us, guys. Oh my gosh, there's mayhem in your city. Thanks for being here. We're so thrilled to have you. Thanks. What an awesome opportunity. Thanks for having us. Of, of course. With um, all the great projects that the three of you do, it was wonderful to see like how like bits and pieces came together. And then somebody was sitting in programming going, you know, we're getting bits and pieces of the show. People were like, oh. Let's do it. So I'm so glad the three of you are here to make up the Birds of Prey. Yes. Birds of Prey. We made some pieces of the show. The pieces of the Birds of Prey, like as each of you were coming in as guests, oh, right, people right. were tying together projects the natural that blonde. on together. So it was a natural blonde. Yes. Plus, not blonde. Yes, we, we like to roll. My friend Cody here is going to run the mic for Q&A out in the audience. Kirby, awesome. Kirby. Or Cody. Kirby. Or Kirby. Or Kirby. Hi, Kirby. Kirby. Thank you. I think he's got the nickname of Kirby for other reasons, Kirby. so you're not far <laughs> off. I'm not. I mean, are there any kids in the room? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Kids at heart, right? Uh, awesome. Yay. Yeah, welcome. Thanks. Thank you. The decoupage class 101. <laughs> Do we have do we have the first question of the day? Because I'll ask the first one if you don't mind. We're going to do some crafts. We're going to do pottery. We're going to do a little painting. Yes, a little painting together. As long as there's some wine. As long as there's some wine. Where's the feedback coming from? Okay, do you guys want to hear a fun fact? So when we did Birds of Prey, I've literally doubled in age. Yeah, I was 16 and I'm 32. Well, I don't, yes. I don't want to tell you how old I am. <laughs> I just celebrated my grandma now. Oh, you did! <laughs> You're like forever 20. Welcome to the club. Yeah, it feels good. 40 is good. 40 is really good. Yeah. You learn some stuff about yourself at 40. Yeah, I think. What, what you want and what you don't want. But we're not here to talk about that. But we're not that. here to talk about <laughs> We're not here to talk about us. <laughs> you get that first question? Yeah, hi, my name is Katie. Thank you so much for coming. Wait, I'm hearing, I don't see. Katie's right, right there. Right here. Okay. I'm right here. <laughs> You're twins with Ash. <laughs> um, my question is for Dina, a uh, huge Oracle fan. I'm just wondering, you know, what was it like to go into that role? Did you know the character beforehand, or, or no. what did you do to prepare? I, I honestly didn't know anything about Oracle. I just knew that she used to be the bat, bat girl. Like, that's what I knew, and I was like, do I get to wear that awesome suit? Because, and they were like, yes, you do, but then no. <laughs> because you see, what happened is, you say, well, you guys know the story, right? I was the Joker. It was a little, he messed things up for me, kind of. Um, but uh, no, so I didn't know anything about the character. Um, but uh, and for me, I, I actually came from a very physical. I mean, I'm, I'm actually a physical, very physical person. I like to do all my stunts and. So this was very challenging for me because I had to literally sit back and watch all of the cool stunts being, <laughs> being done by this sweet mama right yeah. there. Not me. You know, she got to do all the cool stuff. Towards the end, she started sort of. I just yes. stared at people. <laughs> <laughs> she like made things in your mind. So it was very the, the, the most challenging thing for me, honestly, um, as as an actor playing this part was hitting my mark in my life by trying to operate the wheelchair. Because one of the things that I thought was really great about, about Oracle in the comics is that she had a, she had a manual hand, uh, a manual wheelchair, which I thought was awesome because she was strong and she had, the, she had her sticks and she, could, she was still kicking ass. She didn't let her disability get in the way of her fighting crime, 
she was, you know what I mean? Like, and she, in the comics, I think she was, she was way more physical than, than uh, our show kind of portrayed. Um, and I'm not really sure why they chose to do that. I think there was one episode where I actually got to train with the sticks a little bit, um, the Eskrima sticks. That was really, that, that was fun doing that stuff. Um, but for me, really, the, the most challenging part of this was hitting my mark and, and operating the chair and, and uh, trying to, you know, I just had to sit everything out when normally I'm so used to being physical. Um, and, and it was just kind of hard, but I would imagine that girl also was used to being physical. So uh, it just kind of worked. But what, a, but a, what an inspiring character um, to, to play for, you know, um, for me, for, for a bunch of disabled people that say that, you know, you, it doesn't, you know, you can still do plenty. Um, and, and, and what's great is I think Oracle actually became a stronger character than Batgirl ever was, quite frankly. So, um, you know, quite inspiring. And, you know, I just felt very um, grateful to be able to play her. And I, lo I love the, um, the fact that everybody's so... Yeah, love, love what I did. So that's kind of fun. <laughs> a little bit of, you know, positive. <laughs> 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 Spending so much fun in your live stream. I'm like, I'm all squishy fast. Okay, I'm squishing my head. They're mine. I know, I, I did squish your head too, though, see? <laughs> squishy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so question. Hi, guys. How are you? Hey, where is it? I hear the floor. The young lady. Hi. There. Come on up Hi. here. Okay, let's move back. Oh, right. The feedback is, is just a fun cool. Yeah. Big up to the sound guys, by the way. Thank you, guys. <laughs> so my question is, since you guys worked on the show, you had to do a lot of physical activity and a lot of, like, kind of sort of training. Um, so how intense was it for your training, I guess? Or just did you know anything about the series beforehand? Um, for me, they started, I think it was about a month and a half before we started filming, um, and I was intensely learning Taekwondo and boxing and uh, getting my, literally getting my ass in shape, sorry, <laughs> young one. Um, but uh, yeah, there was, I think we were training like eight hours a day, just getting fight sequences down and just getting, understanding, <coughs> starting to, uh, feel what it was like to work with the wires, and um, and so, yeah, I mean, I had a lot of pre-training, which was just a gift. It was super fun, and so by the time we started filming, we were able to really kind of get in there and get nasty and be time efficient. I spent many hours in front of the mirror, staring. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult, and yeah. <laughs> really got myself in shape. <laughs> but now she can move things with her mind. So so to build on that, was there any physicality, Ashley, any issues with the wardrobe <coughs> to the actions that you had to do? Like wardrobe you had a held it all together. Ass wardrobe. Yeah. yeah, I had an amazing wardrobe. Because um, it looked amazing, yeah. but it, was it practical? In the the pilot episode, um, uh, they the first I don't know if you guys remember, but the first the pilot the uh, outfit was different. We changed it, um, and I'm so glad that we did. <laughs> um, it was it was a corset. Obviously, I wore a corset through the whole uh, show, but this one was very constricting, and our first shot It didn't look good. It didn't look good. She looked fine. Everything was all up and in. And, uh, but I remember it was, you know, it was the, the pilots. It was my first day. Uh, it was uh, the scene with Shamar where <coughs> I, uh, I jump out the window uh, and kind of fly, fly out the window. And, um, and I was so, I was nervous, first of all, because it was our first day, and any first day of any job, you're nervous. And um, the first time I fly out a window. Yeah, and I couldn't breathe. I, and so I remember having like a panic attack, but I didn't want anybody to know I was a pit, because I'm supposed to be tough. But I was like, <laughs> I really, oh yeah. You I couldn't like, breathe because I, your, your actually, ribs were so tight. I couldn't yeah. breathe. So, and they have a show of hands. Anybody wear a corset? Anybody? Come on, you guys are cosplayers. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that one, I guess. Um, so they ended up, you know, kind of changing it. And, and I actually preferred the outfit that, that we went further with, um, not just for my own comfort, but I just thought it looked hotter too. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, yes, I had. Everything they put you on was amazing. Issues. Um, but they did such fine work. And in fact, I brought the belt with me this trip. Um, I own the hero belt, thanks to Landy mm -hmm. and Matt. Um, yes, they, they gave it to me, so I have it on. Now, I think I'll wear it tomorrow. Oh, yes. I think I'll wear it on. 
So next question. Hi, my name is Zan, and this question is for Dina. I've watched all of your shows and love them, but I think the first thing I saw you and Dina was Johnny Mnemonic, which I just loved. Oh, wow. And Thank you. <laughs> I was wondering if you could talk about some favorite many, uh, memories on the set from working on Johnny Mnemonic. Oh, God, you know that we shot that back in, oh, let's see, 1994. <laughs> So it was quite some time ago. Uh, let's see, let's see. I know I was very cold because we were shooting in Toronto in the dead of winter. And we were doing, a bunch, there was a bunch of uh, exterior night shots. Um, those scenes where I'm running with Keanu in those alleys that are kind of slick because of, there was all the Did you say you worked with Keanu Reeves? I worked with Keanu Reeves. Wow. <laughs> you didn't know that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's kind of how I felt when I worked with him the first okay, time. Keep going, I, keep going, keep going. Oh, we don't mind. So. We don't have, we've got time. We can just segue. Like, it's fine. I don't mind going out on tangent. Don't we love oh, Keanu Reeves? I, I was like, oh my god, first movie with Keanu Reeves. What? <laughs> just like that. <sighs> no, I didn't, because in 94, we didn't have the what expression. That's, that's, a, that's a new current term. It was cool beans? It's like wicked. Wicked. Cool beans. Like, wicked, that's wicked, or something like that. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so I can just tell you that at night, when we did a lot of our shooting and the exteriors, it was probably about, I don't know, I mean, it was definitely below freezing. Uh, running in those alleys that were wet and or icy, no easy task. And um, the chain mail, I can tell you that chain mail, when you're on your skin, in weather like that, it's really, really cold. It's really, really cold. So that was kind of, uh, you know, it was kind of challenging working with that. But as far as like funny things that happened on that set, it was my first movie. It was my, right out of 90210, I kind of went into that. So um, I think, I mean, I remember being, if, if being starstruck with Keanu wasn't, you know, one thing. Actually having a fight scene with Dolph Lundgren, <laughs> as, you know, as the Jesus, Freaky guy, um, that was kind of awesome. Um, but I don't, really, I don't, I can't really think of like like really really funny, funny stories from that one. I was just really, I think if I was just funny because it was like, wow, this is my first big movie, Keanu, it's dope, it's Henry Rollins, woo, <laughs> thank you, you know. <laughs> thank you, Zan. Hi there. Um, Oh, we love, my wife and I both really love the show, and I'm gonna ask for a favor. My wife is a nurse and could not get off this weekend because, oh, uh, interestingly, her. hospitals don't have holidays. Can you FaceTime her? Well, I was just gonna record a little <laughs> bit of, of you three saying hi, okay. Anne. Anne? Anne, 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 you sure. say just a second here. Wait, okay. Anne, Give us a three, two, Wait, one. It's, yeah. it's Anne, like A-N-N, -N, yeah? Pictures up? A-N-N? -N. Yeah. Okay, tell us when, say one, two, okay. three. One, two, three. Hi, Anne! And then you guys Thank say, you so and there you go. Yeah, you guys say it. One, two, three. Hi, Anne! <laughs> How embarrassed are you right now? <laughs> so, I, I know there's a question floating out about the, um, the portrayal of Dr. Harleen Quinzel on your show. I don't know if you wanted to talk about that or not. Oh, Harley Quinn. Okay, sorry, say that. There was a, the questions about the portrayal of Harley Quinn on our show. Uh, and do you mean specifically uh, Mia or? Well, both if you could please. Oh, you mean how there was a different? Oh, Cheryl and Finn was in the play. Yes, yes. Oh, what Ashley, you that? You know, why don't you away, answer Ashley. that? Ashley, <laughs> Ashley had a problem with Cheryl. Because recast is wrong. just what we all <laughs> want to talk about as actors. It sucks. Sure. Um, when you get recast, uh, <laughs> um, but but Mia Sarah, Mia and Sherilyn Finn's obviously a fantastic actress. In fact, I just worked with her two months ago. Um, but uh, Mia Sarah was just spectacular. Um, she's an amazing she's so actress, awesome. and uh, she taught me a lot about work, about intimacy in work, and uh, trust. And where is Mia Sarah? Hashtag, where is Mia Sarah? Because she, uh, she's wonderful. She's just delightful. Yeah, she was lovely. But it, it happens a lot, recasting. They'll film a pilot, and then for numerous reasons, like uh, it can be something so silly as um, 
well, they don't, they don't think, you know, you might look a little bit too much on screen like another one of the actors and they want someone who looks totally different or uh, your chemistry just doesn't work. Cause you know, you can fake it to a certain extent, but sometimes you can't and there's just no chemistry. Um, or someone up at the studio, you know, was watching the pilot with his wife and she was like, I hate that person. <laughs> and then we're hired. <laughs> you know what I mean? Any and, number of things. Yeah, so it, hap it actually happens a lot, but then usually they'll go back and, and re-film those scenes so you, you never actually know. But um, that movie Jumper was uh, two di completely different actors and then they went and recast it and reshot all of the stuff, um, tons of pilots that, you know, Game of Thrones. Uh, Khaleesi was a different actress. Oh my god, actress. Yeah, up. Yeah, and then after the pilot, they recast her. Oh my god, that Don't tell me, I haven't seen it. Shush your mouth. So good! I will literally... Epic! <laughs> Epic! Um, so... so good. Yeah, but, and they don't really tell you why, so... We don't really have any idea. It's hard, <laughs> but it's, it's just, breaking. it's weird, yeah, because you come to Zen, you're like, oh, this person isn't here anymore, cool. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it's kind of a, the name of the it's game. It's part of the business. Yeah. Good question. Thanks, just, Anne's sorry. husband. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Oh, hello. Uh, I was uh, waiting for, uh, for uh, this one is... Oh, sorry. It's a game of the sidebar over here. It's a game of thrones. Uh, yes. Say that again. Sorry. Uh, hello. Uh, this um, question, I might, this is for uh, Dina Mayer, Meyer, or Mayer. D Dina Meyer. Dina Meyer. Dina Meyer. Dina Meyer. Dina Meyer. Uh, I might have you confused with someone else. I haven't seen this one crying drama in a while, but I believe you starred in a movie with James Caan. Poodle Springs. Yes, that yes. was it. Twas I. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I, I was wondering, uh, what was it like working with James Conn? In a word, amazing. Wow. Yeah, I mean, he was, I mean, it's Sonny Corleone. I mean, Godfather, right? I mean, you guys have seen The Godfather, right? Right. I mean, so, I mean, working with him was uh, just fantastic. And I actually, that was my first movie that I did coming off of Starship Troopers. Um, thank you. Whoop, 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 whoop. Go Dizzy, go Dizzy. So, so that was kind of, uh, yeah, because I had, I had done Johnny Mnemonic, and then did uh, Dragonheart, and then Starship Troopers, and all three were quite physical, strong, you know, tough female roles. <laughs> of course they were female, because um, I, I, I need to like specify that. I don't know why I need it. <laughs> why, why am I saying I go to tough female role? Like, obviously, I'm just stupid. Anyway, um, and then so, so we thought it would be kind of cool to go and play this film noir, really girly, 60s, um, uh, Philip Marlowe. It's Philip, yeah, Philip Marlowe. Philip Philip Marlowe. Yeah, Philip Marlowe, like the big sleep. Yeah. Um, I'm moving. It was just like, it seemed like a really good um, uh, transition for me. And then to work with, I mean, if you guys know, uh, Bob Rafelson was the director. Five Easy Pieces, uh, Postman Always Rings Twice. I mean, he's Okay, well, you need to go and rent those, or like Netflix, or, or you can Netflix and chill with your loved one, or soon-to-be loved one, and um, watch those movies, because they're awesome. And working with, with Bob, he kind of taught me the whole, like, you know, he would give direction, like, here, try, try it this way. You know, or he'd let me do what I wanted to do, and I would just do, do the scene that way. And then he would go, okay, great, now, what don't you do? Try this. And I would try that, and it would be completely different, different kind of reading. And then he would say, okay, now why don't you split the difference between the two? So you've got all of this different coverage of the, of the scene and the way the character would do certain things. And I think it was probably best, uh, you know, really, it's really great in editing because you don't really know sometimes how things are gonna start to cut together. And I know that I've boned myself um, by giving, you know, if I only was able to do one or two takes and doing the same thing, and you see like, and you see the final cut of the movie, you're like, oh, damn, I wish I, didn't do so much. I mean, they made such a strong choice in that direction because it was not really going with the way they finally cut uh, the film. Sure, together. editing is so hard because there are certain scenes that maybe you're not in that preclude or, or after your scene, and there's a tone that's set by previous actors or afterwards, and then what you do is the mirroring piece between the two. Case in point, and I'm not going to tell you what movie it was, but I had to do a, a, a scene where I was emotional because of a flashback that I was seeing at the time in the scene. 
So I'm forcing it in this scene to show this emotion. And the final cut, they took the flashback out. <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Now she just seems psychotic. Why is she so, <laughs> she's so emotional, freaking out? Like, or she's all really hormonal or something, I don't know. But she's like all crying over something stupid. And the, and the character. Yeah. <laughs> female, the female character. I mean, that was the male character she played, actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, yeah, so editing's a big, uh, a big thing. Because it, so anyway, so Bob Rickelson taught me about doing, you know, giving different reads. And I don't know, you guys probably have experienced that, you know, where you shouldn't just do one thing. Because if you kind of give a couple of different reads, then in editing, depending on which way they go, they have... The option to choose what's best for the film and not what you thought was best at the time. I just do one. I'm like, she's like, that's it. Just one, one and done. <laughs> <laughs> one and done. <laughs> one and done. Yeah, that's, she's right. She's right. She's right. <laughs> so bringing it back to the show, for it's a pretty with tying it to editing in a way. With the ending of the show, did, were you aware that this was an ending of sorts? Yes. So you knew did that we they were not going to. Yeah, we knew oh, five okay. episodes before. Yes, we knew. We knew because oh, okay. we started mm -hmm. filming in the summer. And then we knew before Christmas, didn't we? Yeah, it was heartbreaking. It stinks when they cancel you while you're still shooting. Yeah, but you know what, though? It was, <laughs> it was I have to tell you, though, to make an yeah, ending. We, we, get to, we got to create an ending. We also, because everybody was like, WB, um, <laughs> we, <laughs> we were able to exercise, uh, I think, what the producers and uh, really wanted. And so the last few episodes, I think, were really strong and character and uh, in tone and we were uh, we did our very best to complete uh, a project that we felt so very uh, was very precious the finale was pretty awesome though right guys because it's so finale. shitty when a show finale I swear I swear um, when a show that you lo like I watched Jericho oh my gosh it was so <laughs> and it just ended yeah. I was like what it yeah. doesn't no kill Holocaust what's happening yeah. you know so it's nice to have an ending for birds apart yes that felt little, little that closure. Felt, felt nice it was somewhat respectful <laughs> well I've heard that um, Mark Hamill dubbed in the voice of the Joker over the actor that was being portrayed was that something you knew ahead of time or was that in post-production where they kind of snuck that in and you guys were unaware I, I, I didn't know yeah I'm just yeah, hearing about this right now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I saw his name in the credits, and I was like, wow. Oh, that's oh, cool. Cool. So I was that's 16, I didn't know anything. Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's Tuesday? Crazy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi. We didn't, we, we, <laughs> How's it going? Good. Hey. Um, so being pretty much the same age as you are, Rachel, with the same name, Nice. It's a good name. It's a, it's a good Rachel. name to go with. Do you spell it you with a good name? E no, it's just E-L. Yeah, no, that's what I said. That's yeah. perfect. That's yeah. right. It's, it's We're on the, the same page. It's the right way to spell it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask, having grown up with, with not a lot of strong female characters on the television and, and then watching Birds of Prey as a teenager in high school um, and getting to see that stronger Oracle, uh, you know, that stronger Barbara Gordon as, as Oracle instead of Bat, Batgirl, um, what character would you, whether it's fictional or, you know, real, is there someone that you would want to portray now um, to show that strong female empowerment, that strong female character? At <laughs> well, I would say Batman, and like actually be Batman, not Batgirl. <laughs> Jodie Foster made roles from male to female, so do right? Yes. Because I was such a huge, um, at, like Birds of Prey was really interesting for me because I was such a huge Batman fan growing up. Like Adam West's Batman was, my jam. I loved that show. And uh, and then also the WB was right in my wheelhouse at that time, like Buffy the Vampire. So I mean, I remember going to the Upfronts mm. and it was like a playground, yeah. you know? I was so nervous and Seventh Heaven, like all those shows that I watched and were so important to me. But if I could be any, yeah, no, Batman. Like yeah. Batman's just my favorite. <laughs> I would, I would just change Batman to a girl and but keep Batman and be Batman. Yeah, give us your best Batman voice. Like, Fuck you... no, are you Batman? <laughs> <laughs> that stuff is private for the shower. <laughs> I like that you role play Batman in the shower. That's great. <laughs> I try and save myself, I just throw myself under the bus. Like, it's literally impossible. <laughs> That's 
perfect. You're perfect. Thank you. What about you, Ashley? Superhero that you would love to portray today? Oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, I would love to say Wonder Woman, but it's like impossible to follow. I just that movie was so. But you bad. can say Wonder Woman. Yeah, I, I, I like Wonder Woman. I would be Wonder Woman if I could. Deadpool. Oh. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, of course. Right? Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. She beat us. <laughs> right? Nailed that. Nailed it. Yeah. Dina goes first next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, would the three of you return as those characters reimagined? All grows up. All grows up. As Huntress. Or yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We would. would you guys like that? Playing the Huntress was my most favorite. One of my most. They're doing a reboot. That's yeah. supposedly anyway. That's what I heard. Yeah. Can go ahead and call the people that are doing the reboot <laughs> and make it happen. Just you know, I mean, we'll we'll give you a percentage. They're doing a reboot. <laughs> <laughs> you can just call fan, them up and make it happen. Fan write-in campaign. <laughs> Did you say they're doing a reboot of Birds of Prey? Yeah. They're supposed to be doing. That's one of the things they're talking about doing. Yeah. The sirens. Yeah. With oh, we talk about doing all sorts of things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Jericho's coming back any day now. <laughs> Seriously, I really want that to happen. Yeah, no, no, no. So many people do. We're doing our very best. We're trying. We're trying. Next question. Hello, ladies. Hi. I have a quick question. This is or kind of a two-part. How did you feel like being a all-female superhero squad? It was probably you know a little cutting edge at the time. And how did you feel going into that show? Um, with that thought, and then now looking back on it, because maybe it was a little too cutting edge given the, sh the short run of it. Oh my gosh, yeah. if that show was on now, we'd still be on the air. It was yeah, just before it's time. It was ahead of its time, for sure. Like, Arrow, I think, kind of did what we were trying to do 10 years before. I watched Arrow the other day, and I was like, God dang it, that's exactly you like it. Oh. <laughs> Even the set looked like our set. <laughs> you know? That's uh, awesome. Do you like me? We're short. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, continue. I interrupted you, though. Yes, excuse me. <laughs> well, that takes me back to that meme that was created when Wonder Woman came out about, like, you know, Wonder Woman, the first female superhero for it. And I just kept waiting for the Birds of Prey girls to be like, really? <laughs> first one, seriously. seriously. Right? Yeah, we, we nailed it. Sorry, I mean, continue. Yes, continue. Sorry. No, I kind of took it and went where I was asking you how the. Reflecting back on it, you know, how do you feel now? Like you said, you're on cutting edge and, you know, were you ahead of your time? And how you felt going into it before that, not knowing where it was going to go, I guess, that would be the well, same part. Well, Smallville had been really successful, and it was the same production company. Um, but I think when you look at the tone of Smallville and Birds of Prey, they were so different. Very different. And Smallville was very sort of appropriate for that time period, and I, I think there are lots of reasons why that show hit. And then... Um, why we didn't, but if that had flipped and been on the air now, I think it might have been the opposite. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, but that's how it goes, you know? Mm -hmm. You, some shows, like Game of Thrones might not have hit 10 years ago, or if it was 10 years from now, it's just, a lot of it is just luck of the draw, and, mm -hmm. and um, kind of word of mouth, and, and, and back then too, I think now there's so much more freedom when you're making television, because it's not, so like solely dependent on ratings. Mm -hmm. Whereas back then, you had three episodes to get the best ratings ever, and if you didn't get it, you were cut. Mm -hmm. um, there was no option to be sold to Netflix. Uh, there was no option to be sold to another network at all. And so, you know, we were battling that as well. Definitely, and, and I was saying earlier that American Idol came out at opposite us. Like the and first the year of The Bachelor. Of in American Idol. Really? Oh. Yeah. It was like, Ooh. I mean, you know, our, we, we had great ratings, but compared to the show, I mean, you know, there was all, there's all sorts of uh, variables. The variables, the play, yeah. But, um, but, you know, we all are super grateful that we were able to play the characters we were. And, um, and grateful and, for the fans that yeah, keep I was going to say, still, no. this is 15 exactly. years. And, and yet you have the name today. Does it mean something that we're sitting in our production meetings to program the show? Was everyone going, oh, we have to do a Birds of Prey panel? Mm -hmm. So if it's still on the forefront, then yeah, that means that you did make a mark. Reboot, you know? reboot. Re <laughs> same cast, same cast. <laughs> 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 
Mexico. You'd be like the Golden Girls. Yeah. Wait a minute. You like the Birds of Prey Golden Girls. No. You like in Miami. No, we don't look better. We're like a visor. Yeah, I mean. Birds of Prey Golden Girls. We'd all be in. Yeah. Eating my cheesecake. Yeah. Jeez. No. <laughs> Not yet. Um, can I tell you something, though? A friend of mine was uh, out and she sends me this picture. And well, first of all, she sends me a text being like, oh my gosh, I'm at this Chinese restaurant and like you have a new show, this is so cool. And I'm like, I do a new show, like what? <laughs> and she sends me a picture, she's in the bathroom stall and there's a Birds of Prey poster. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, when is this show coming out? <laughs> 16 years ago, but that's all. That restaurant needs to redecorate. Yeah. That's a real clean stall. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, you need to get out of that restaurant Let's immediately. Let's not share this story again that our posters are never. <laughs> you sure it was a restaurant? <laughs> a massage parlor? <laughs> okay, later. Next question. <laughs> This one's for Rachel. Hi, my name's Sydney. Hi. Um, I know you said on Birds of Prey you didn't get to get really physical, but on Lost Girl as Tamsin, yeah. you kicked butt. Yeah. So what was it like to go from a strong female character of Birds of Prey when you were 16 and then fast forward those few years to Lost Girl with that strong character, because that was amazing. Well, it's funny, because I also, I was a Valkyrie on that show, so I would look at people and, and they would die. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, we're here again. Cool. <laughs> Just giving this to guy once again. Um, but Tamsin was really cool because I got to have a physicality, not just only in fighting, but also a physical humor. And um, that was, like such a gift to be able to play that, like both of those sides in a character. Uh, and Lost Girl was also my first foray back into television, really after I'd, I'd left, because when Birds of Prey wrapped, I quit acting, I went to university, I became a like normal civilian and loved it. And it was like my dirty little secret that I'd been an actress. And one day we were all like sitting in my house and I lived with eight girls and Birds of Prey came on television. <laughs> and I hadn't told any of them that I was an actress, and they were all like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm like, what like, the fuck? It's so weird, that girl looks so much like me. <laughs> She's trying to press the button with her eyes. <laughs> I know, like, change, change. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was it was really fun to get to actually be a part of the. I did a little bit of it at the end of Birds of Prey for sure, but they got to do way cooler, cooler stuff than I did. I think so. It was it was fun to be like part of the, the cool gang on Lost Girl for sure. Did you get to do things with women on those shows? Not really. I I did that one fight training with you, um, and then at the in the last episode I did a little bit, but yeah, I didn't really do anything episode, physical. Big fight no, I just went to the craft truck and. <laughs> I was fighting all the time. Yeah. Would, like every break I had, I would run and learn the next fight sequence and run. <laughs> it was just it was awesome. You worked so much. Oh my yeah. gosh, it was great. I was just you fighting know. with the and a lot of nights, a lot of working nights. <coughs> just kind of a, yeah. I couldn't work nights because I was a minor. Yeah, I know. That's why. I had I, that's so why easy. I was working. I remember nights. these girls used to be like, "We can't wait till you turn 18, and you have to work the long hours." Because I'd literally come in and like dip after eight hours and be like, "Please, guys." <laughs> Minor. Yeah. Well, we'll be here for 16 hours. <laughs> yeah. Glamorous life. Hi. What Hi, my name is Andrew. Um, first of all, I'm so excited that there's a panel of Birds of Prey here at Dragon Con. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, gosh, I love this show so much. Um, I have a question for each of you. Um, had the series continued, is there any particular villain of the Batman's Rogue Gallery that each of your characters would have liked to have gone up against? Dina first. I was going to say, you asked that. Like, I'm supposed to be familiar with all of the villains <laughs> in, in the DC Universe. <laughs> So can I have a, can I have a multiple choice? Can you? Can sure. You like, oh, no, that's a good like, good idea. And the Joker, the, the penguin. I like the penguin. The penguin, yeah. yeah. The Riddler. Especially Danny DeVito's penguin. Yes. Oh, so like <laughs> creepy and good. I loved that. And also in uh, Toronto. 
they're across this, like the condo across the street from me. I swear the Joker lives there or the Riddler because it's just green all the time. So we actually refer to it as like the Joker's apartment. <laughs> so maybe him. <laughs> so the question is, do you, who would we be or who would we go up against? Let's go up, go up against. against. Yeah, who would you go up against? I'll go up against the Hamburglar. <laughs> How about that? Oh wait, wait, that's... That's You're channeling like Deadpool again. Okay. <laughs> the Grimace? Oh, the Grimace. Is there's so many great ones. Two Face? How many Two Face? Two Face? Yeah. Two Face? Or what else? Um, you got the Penguin, the Riddler, the Joker, uh, Clayface. Um, Clayface. Who is the Hamburglar? Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze. Freeze. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, sure. that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Boys and Ivy. Ivy. Oh. Ooh. Oh, the yeah, Flesh and Ivy. Oh. Okay, I'll go against Poison Ivy. Yeah. Like, you, of course you would. Yeah. Of course you would. Because I got poison ivy once. It sucked. <laughs> it sucked. <laughs> anyway. I'm, I'm sticking with hamburger. Just because it's funny. <laughs> 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 so I'm just going with it. Okay, hi. Hi. I'm hi. Keith. Uh, wonderful to see you guys here. I love the show. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. One of the things I thought really worked from the very first was, there was an immediate on-screen chemistry with the three of you. Uh, did you feel that right away? Did, did you guys sense that it was working? And after you knew the show was, was going to go away, did you stay in touch? I think there was, a, there was an overall sense of excitement and camaraderie from the get-go. Yes. I think we're all really excited to be there. We didn't know what to expect. We were just, just so excited. This is going to be great. Like you said, Upfronts was just like, what is going on here? Yeah, it's such like a so whirlwind cool. of an ex as an, as actors. You, there's downtime, and so anytime you get a show, you're like, wow, ah, yeah, this is so great. And then the material and how it was so, uh, was, you know, three women out there slaying, which felt really good. Yeah, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, it was just a whirlwind of excitement in general, and then when we started to get, you know, to actually do the work, um, it was really, yeah, it was, we knew, we knew it was special. I have to tell you guys a story. So, I'm, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I still remember this, this many years later. Both these ladies, like, to me, were so cool. Because you know when you're 16, like, even someone who's 17 is really old, and, like, cool, <laughs> you know? So to me, they were, like, so cool, and, like, I just, Oh my gosh. And so we Ashley had, had these pants. <laughs> I still don't have boobs, I'm still waiting. But anyways, um, Ashley had these pants. Do you remember from Urban Outfitters? Oh my gosh. <laughs> they were so cool. They were like kind of cargo y. And <laughs> oh my goodness, I coveted these pants so much. And I guess I must have told you. And then one day I go to my trailer and there are the pants. And she went and bought them for me in my size. And then we were twins, and it was, it like <laughs> changed my life. It changed my life. I kept those pants for so long. Like, I would wear them, people would be like, those aren't in style anymore. Like, I love them. They were like parachute pants, do you guys remember? And that's just an example of how I was looked after on that show. And um, because I was very much like my character coming to LA from Toronto, I had no idea what was going on. And uh, so I'm very grateful for that. We, yeah, she got in the mama. We mama. Yeah. And I go for sleepovers at your house, right? <laughs> Those are fun. <laughs> so, so, yes, pants. So, about Shamar? Oh. Stories. Yeah. Oh. Was he a good kisser? <laughs> Did he kiss good? He looked like he would kiss good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he did. Um, we had to practice. Of course. Of course. <laughs> because, you know, you want to get that, you want to get that right. <laughs> um, yeah, Shamar was dreamy. Mm. I think still, that's a fair statement across the board. My mom was dreamy. like, he's smooth as butter. I'm yeah. like, ew, cross my <laughs> <laughs> He um, was super dreamy. Yeah, I met him at a party once and I was Did like, you? okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mm -hmm. genetics. That worked yeah. well in your face. Yeah, he's a divine <laughs> specimen. He knows yeah, it. He knows it. He knows it. He knows it. He's he divine. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we could just. We're like, like yeah, let's have a moment of silence. We could all just think about Ashley making it out with Shamar. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, that was good. Yeah, that was really good. good. Yeah. You guys okay? <laughs> all right, next question. Yeah. <laughs> it's just all so weird. 
<laughs> Thanks for coming to the con. I was wondering what you guys, your lovely, beautiful, talented ladies, are going to be working on I'll next. I'll get to see. Thank you. I'm sorry, what we're, what we're working on? Yeah, like future projects. What are you working on now? What we'll see next? Out. Oh, I actually, oh, sorry, do you have to have something? No, you're first always. Okay, I'm not She's like after the Deadpool coming, you know, you always, we yeah, will follow. Yeah, it's always you. Give you some time to think of something good. Um, I'm actually just, I just started working on The Magicians. Do you guys know that? Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 I'll be playing uh, the Stone Queen, the Stone Queen in season three. So, uh, so unlike you. I yes, know, right? I. I'm, I'm, I'm the Stone Queen. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I actually just got back from Vancouver like two days ago. I, mm -hmm. I flew back to L.A. from Vancouver after shooting an episode there. I uh, got back on Wednesday and I flew here on Thursday. So it was that quick. It was like less than 24 hours at home. But yes, uh, we were recurring on The Magicians. So you can look for that. And I've got like an episode of Code Black coming out once, nice. uh, once the show comes, uh, comes back on. I think uh, it should be mid-season. And uh, we have a couple movies, a couple Lifetime shows maybe. Yeah. Lifetime. What? <laughs> Speaking of Lifetime, yeah. uh, are you watching that? Um, Saturday, I have a Lifetime movie coming out called uh -huh. One Small Indiscretion. <laughs> <laughs> or One Just Really Small, probably. Very Small Indiscretion. Can you tell us what that is? Uh, it's too small. It's too small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Saturday night, yeah. Um, I, I now play moms that kick ass. Mm. So now I play these strong female roles that get to, you know, fight for my family. I love it. It's good yes. stuff. So anyway, we'll all be busy because we'll be here. But you know, yeah, well, you have a small a small bit of time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Alright. Rachel's um, got a list. I'm uh, I'm actually doing a Hallmark movie. My mom loves Hallmark films. Mm -hmm. Well, who doesn't? And They're yeah, awesome. no, but like she loves them, <laughs> especially the Christmas one. So Hallmark came to me and they like, "Do you want to do a Christmas movie?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I gotta do this for my mom." And when I told her, she put her hands on my shoulders and she was like, "Rachel, you've really made it." <laughs> <laughs> So I've made it, guys. Um, so that's coming out at Christmas, shocker. And um, I had a, I did a movie called Molly's Game with uh, that Aaron Sorkin directed, which was nice. really cool. Oh, wow. And then I also just did a, an independent film, which is going to be doing like the festival circuit called Acquainted, which was really really fun. Cool. Um, yeah. So we've been busy. Film. <laughs> She's making her mark. I know, it was really, it was really fun. It was like, but I love Christmas, like, love it. But after this movie, I was like, no more Christmas ever. <laughs> it was like so much Christmas in April. <laughs> You're just over it. <laughs> well, ladies, I want to say on behalf of Dragon Con, I appreciate that you taking the time out of your busy day on the Walk of Fame. Is that where you're going to be after this we're panel? Yes. yes. We'll be there. Yes. So if you can get your question answered. We're doing photo shoots. Some photo shoots. shoots. Okay. We're right. doing photo op after this. Yeah, we're doing photo ops. Awesome. We so like, definitely like, stop by their tables and funny, say hello weird to them. Photo and follow us on Twitter and Instagram and all the social media stuff because we're all there and we're really silly and fun. And we share lots of cool yeah. stuff. Look, she's still. I'm still doing she's it. Still, like, she's still showing it. Except, <laughs> except I don't quite know how to do it. Instagram is Ashley Scott Mama. But I was saying I'm not like, well, I'm, I'm getting better at it. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure the only people that are watching this are my family members. <laughs> that, backstage, <laughs> literally, they were like, oh, look, like, this is your video. And I was like, oh, yeah, oh. <laughs> and I'm she like, she's like, like, do you know that's just my family that follows me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you guys for coming and having us here.